This, this is, is incredible. No central library. They call it. This is the Shakespeare Hall. This is yeah. what an incredible entrance. And there's the reading room. What a beautiful space. Brilliant. Amazing. This is the exhibition. How incredible. I can't wait to jump in and dig around and have a good look. This is a great starting point. We're in Manchester, we're in the Central Library, and we start the exhibition with this real love letter to the city. You put two works side by side that are digital and traditional, analog, so you have that feel and that contrast. There's a real serenity to this piece um, and tactileness with, with the brickwork. Um, and just that, that central light that's illuminating. And of course, there's a and figure right at the end. There's a figure right at the end, yes. Who is this person? Do we it's, know? Oh, no, we don't. It's a random person because I was set up and I, took the, I thought, there's a person there. So just keep walking, keep walking. And took the picture and, they, uh, and they're just sitting right there in the middle of the uh, How fantastic. The image. In a way, I can't imagine it without the person because it just centers it. Yep. And you need that human experience, that yes. person in there that tells a bit more of the story. The sky above her, what it's named as, yes. are the next pictures. And this is a very different shift from what, from yep. the introduction yes. to the space and what we're presented with. Those first pictures were for um, the exhibition that I did in um, 2020. Two weeks after I'd hung it, second lockdown, shut. Oh gosh, and that must have been so crushing. It, it was a bit, it couldn't be helped. They went, we loved what you've done, do you want to come back again? I said, I would love that, absolutely adore that. And in that, in that gap, those three years, um, did you add more work oh, to the exhibition? Did you change the... Completely changed, right. completely so changed. Yeah. My mum died in a care home, not from COVID, but during COVID, so I couldn't see her. Uh, very close to my mum, just sitting by a grave. And I thought, look at the colours here, wow. absolutely fabulous. And these are the works? These are those works. People think that they are computer generated, but they are simply the sky. The sky. They're really beautiful. And talk me through the, um, the presentation of the works, because obviously they're not the traditional photographs where you have glass on the front. No, no. If they were behind glass, they would be hit by so many reflections as well. So true. What you don't get down here is the reflections. That makes them look more unreal yes. than... Um, I can understand that. And often with glass, it can flatten the colors mm -hmm. um, and actually detract from what you're trying to show. And I think there's an incredible sense of peace and calmness. I mean, these are very abstract. And again, so different, such a different jump from the works that we looked at at the beginning. And as yes. I can see going yeah. forward. And people come in, they love these pictures, but then they, they, they get the explanation of them. And it's the, the next level of, uh, of understanding and, and of love for them. I love coming into the exhibition and watching people read. Mm. And, and they, they go, oh, now they mean so, mm -hmm. so much more. Mm -hmm. Again, with art, I think what you find with most of the, the greatest artists, you look back at when they were learning, right. the work that they're producing was absolutely stunning. They've just worked their way right. down of and course. they've narrowed and it they've down. And they've narrowed the, and honed yes. their own technique absolutely. and presentation. Yes. And often the most simplest works are, are what, what's the saying, still waters run deep. Yes. They have so much uh, yeah. depth and profoundness to them. Yes. Funny, uh, not always, but often when I look at photographs or painting, I hear music. Okay. And I hear, um, speaking of, we were talking earlier about Richter, but I hear Max Richter, the yes. composer, mm -hmm. yes. um, when I look at these. And of course, you can't ignore, and I mean this complimentary comparison to Rothko, to the paintings of Rothko, of course. Right. Wait until you see one of my seascapes. I've, I've hung one especially for you. But sky above her. And I think my mum would love that I've hung her oh, pictures wonderful. next to the, the pictures which I've shot at Pride. I shoot these in film and in black and white as well. Mm. I specifically mm -hmm. shot Pride mm -hmm. in black and white because it's, it's such a colourful event. It's such a fabulously colourful event. And there are loads of people out shooting it. And all the pictures you see are so bright and full of colour that you don't see what's particularly right, in the Right, it's distracting. Image. The colour can be yes. right. But there's only one picture that I would like to see of these in colour. And it's that one there. It's the baby because the flag yes. would have been so multicolored, and that poor child really wasn't happy to be at, yeah. a, at Pride. I love that this is 
the chronological order of the day. This is the beginning of the day, moves down yes. to the end. The presentation reminds me of a Winogrand series, where okay. it, it is like a storyboard. I'm so interested in all of these angles as well that you've taken the works, because some are, some are high, some are low. Um, this one almost looks like it could be shot from the hip. And of course, what's so wonderful about these is they're, they're not staged. You're clearly walking, you're, you're following the procession, you're stopping, photographing people. There's a spontaneity and lightness uh, in these images. This could be the 70s. Yes. But I like that on a few of them, you see a little bit of the grain. I yes. like that, um, that, um, that inherent quality of film. Which so many people, perfect. yes, it's which is which perfect. is great. And again, I love this progression from day to night, and uh, the mood yes. slightly shifts yeah, and changes. This is clearly the end of the parade. It's great. Uh, I, I love these two pictures because the, the razzmatazz is over. Yes. The, um, the, the the glitz and the glamour has has vanished a touch. And, and there are people standing there that earlier in the day would have just been so, so hyped and so high and bouncing around and having so much fun. And now we've got this lady here. I love the look on her yes. face that she, she's got that. She's had a touch to drink. And you her know, Uber's you, late. You, you like this going, yeah. <laughs> so we can all relate to that pose. And This is where my heart is. Yeah. I just love documentary. Well, you're so good at it. There's such a warmth and feel and, and there's a, there's a playfulness and fun aspect to the work. Again, it's so reminiscent of, of the great American street photographers, Gary Winogrand. Mm. Um, the framing is really tight and interesting, and I just love all the personalities that come through. So moving on to our next space. Wow, big, wow, big surprise. We're back in color. They have that feeling of like a Turner sky. Okay. Um, this one and the one further down. There's something, yeah, to me, very, very painfully about these. Every time I hang that picture there, guaranteed that someone will walk up to it and go, Ooh, Rothko, let me see, Rothko, Rothko. The, funny, this one in particular, I feel more like this is a colour Sugimoto seascape. Well, it, this was hung along with the blue one on the left-hand side, unseen, and um, Brett Rogers. Yes, I, I didn't know who the, former, I did, yeah. the former director for many, many years. Yeah, um, the, the photographer's 20, gallery. 20, yeah. 25 years of the, and, yeah, um, of the she's, photographer's she's gallery. She's like this, and she's looking at me. And she's looking at me, and she goes, hmm. She didn't know who I was, and she just went to, said, Hiroshi Sugimoto, she said, but better. Oh, and what she a walked, compliment. And she walked off. Did you know who that was? <laughs> Do you know who that was? If she goes, Hiroshi Sugimoto, but better, she said, take that absolutely take it there's a, a very narrow window that you can photograph these in a year because the sun's got to be in exactly the right position and i walked out to the sea to, to the front and I, it's hazy can't see took a photograph and that appeared and this is what came, the result that is the result oh, how and interesting. i went instantly i went from don't judge what you see in front of you just shoot what's there it, and it's the same with documentary photography people walk up to them and just go and then look out and that's when they go these are beautiful where were they photographing off blackpool and it pulls them back into themselves sure and i can understand why people are confused and think that these might be paintings because of course it looks like a brush stroke yeah. it looks very much like an abstract uh, painting that someone's just taken a brush. They could almost be, I mean, they're more colorful, but like a Liu Fein, like yes. just yep. with a brush going over and over. So if you see a snapshot, it looks like the beach at Blackpool. But if you just blur it enough, you lose that reality. But do you know what? I'm, I'm getting James Terrell feels with this. Hear me out, because the more I look at this, the more I see. I'm seeing now the, yes. the clouds, mm -hmm. yep. right? Yes. So like a James Terrell, you sort of, you're presented and think, oh gosh, what am I looking at? And your, your retina plays tricks on you in your eye. And of course, we shouldn't always trust a photograph. I, mean, I know, yes. Um, yeah. But it, it's remarkably, um, still, and I'm not suggesting you use two different negatives at all, but it almost looks like they're from two different um, the sky yeah. and the sea is people different. Say, people say, are they composites? 
and they're not. Nope. Yeah, nope. but it has that feel, which of course, that seascape and composites yes. harks back to the very early traditional forms of photography. If we think of Gustave Le Grey and his magnificent seascapes and how he composites yes. the sky and the sea together. So people now today think, oh, Photoshop is this idea. Well, the digital version of yes. that is, is yeah. new, of course, with technology. But people, photographers have been doing it for since photography was invented forever. Really, really beautiful. And again, that very relaxed, contemplative feeling yeah. of the work, uh, that serenity. These are Matthew Bourne's New Adventures, who are very famous um, dance company. Shot this chap here, Isaac. Isaac here. Uh, shot right. in there, and I thought he was fabulous. I thought, I want to photograph a couple. And Karumi and Harry were right here. here, and they were just oh, unbelievably oh, wow. perfect. Uh, at the end of one roll of film, he started messing with the hair, and I just said, get your hands in her hair. Well, it's sculptural, isn't yeah. it, almost? It looks like a, um, a high Renaissance Bernini type, uh, and you feel that movement. And this very stark, the backdrop, and they're illuminated. They have um, not just a sculpture, but almost an architectural feel to them. They're, they're solid structures yes. in this black space. There's an intimacy as a viewer that yes. you feel that you're in this space with them. But this is Harry, this is the chap from that photograph. Uh, but he was, he was just moving on his own and he, uh, he did that. And he, that he's, he's chiseled, he really, yes. really is. Well this, I mean, this to me is reminiscent clearly of Mapplethorpe and his uh, use of chiaroscuro, that dark and the light, in honing the body. Yes. These are incredibly beautiful. And I love this one at the end, how the dancer is, yes. is off center. You have all this black empty space, but not there's, you feel yes. that they were just there. They're moving in that space. Really, really beautiful. I mean, these are just exquisite. They really, really are. Again, shooting them on film, it's just, it's that aesthetic. The pictures aren't perfect. You go up close to them and you can see the grain, you can see the texture in them. Totally. But that's not where you look at a picture. You step back. Absolutely. And you, you can feel it. So I love that you shot these on film. Yes. It definitely adds a, it's a different feeling um, I can see in my head than had it been digital. This wall is just photographs that I've taken in Manchester. I'm learning so much about this city that I'm, I'm not familiar with at all, but these are, this is a lovely window. Two of these are digital. This one? Yes. <laughs> I want, to, I want to say this one that, is. That, uh, right, you see, that, that, that's, that's the red, red herring. That, that's yeah. red ink because yeah. look, you see the form of that, that's look six by the, seven inch right, film. Right, yeah, exactly, the so, perspective, yeah. But that's such a beautiful, yeah. He, he was reading his newspaper and I had so much time. It's one of the things you don't normally have when you're doing these pictures. He was sitting there into his newspaper and I could stand in front of him, frame, photograph, and click. It was, yeah. it was great, the Grinch that stole Christmas. That one does draw people in. That's so great. This one here, again, everyone's pulled into this one. I was very, very lucky with this picture. Her mother was close by, and I went down, and it went click. And I was very lucky that her hair was in front of her face. It makes it anonymous. It gives it that little totally. bit of intrigue. But you want to get close to these. I feel like with film, you do want to see, like, if I'm, I'm close here, I can see the droplets. Yes. And you can feel that it's wet. I would have thought that was in the 80s. Yep. You know, that sort of punk, or 70s, that punk rock. I was interested in her and her makeup. She looked fabulous. Yes, he is. wasn't happy. Luckily, you didn't capture that, <laughs> that, that anger or uh, that came after. Oh my gosh, this is the kiss wall. This is the romantic. Yes, this is it. Beautiful. And when was this taken? Um, I can't remember, was that taken? Um, 2014, 2013, 2014. You can age it by the building. Right. If you desperately wanted to, you could, uh, you could age it by uh, the, the building, which is, right. which is now complete. But that's, uh, that's a pure platinum print. Ooh, beautiful. Because I, uh, I played around with platinum palladium. And so I thought, could you do one that is just pure platinum? And yep, you can. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's horrendously expensive. Yes. But it's, uh, you get more of a black and white. You see the texture of the clothes. The feel, the actual um, porous nature of, of the 
of the concrete. Yes. It was so beautiful with Platinum because you see that materiality. Do you, do you have a preference of photographing people in this documentary so, or photographing buildings? You're, you're so accomplished in all of them. I wonder which, Easy. to me, it's documentary. People. People, yeah, the street, the documentary. There's nothing like taking a photograph of somebody that they like. Absolutely. People say, did you take my photograph? I go, yes, yeah, I did. Why? Um, it reminds me of uh, Bruce Davidson mm. and um, his book Subway. If I think I've taken a good documentary photograph, I just get that book out of the bookcase, I flick through it and I go, no doesn't work because there because he was shooting with film yes. on the subway mm. in an age where you would get killed mm. in places mm -hmm. where you would get killed mm -hmm. he was shooting using flash mm -hmm. and he said he had a little album mm -hmm. he used to take an album with him didn't he so that yes, he could actually okay. show people yes. and go this yeah. is what the pictures look yeah. like and they would go all right we won't kill you we'll like these we'll, we'll just enjoy well, these well, pictures yeah. this is the last documentary wall okay. and this is from London and around the world. This chap here, he was great, he was. Um, the what a game, character. Piccadilly Circus. Yes. Traffic, he's on the other side of the road and he clocked me and he saw me with my camera and he, he must have his photograph taken all the time. Took his photograph, camera down and he yelled at me. He went, pound please. Oh, uh, well. <sighs> It's so cheeky, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. Wait, is it cheeky me stealing? I'm stealing his photograph, but he's so must be, he, he must be bored of people. you can't be you dressed can't, like that uh, and expect exactly. people not to take your photo. Exactly. He should have a sign saying, I'm going to charge yes. if you take my <laughs> yeah. photo, no? Indeed. These are so wonderful, these, these very clear moments. I love the... This is very... She's called, uh, she's Dr. Pam Hogg. She's a cult... Oh yes, of course. Is that Pam Hogg? That's Pam Hogg oh, on wow. the tube. I know who Pam Hogg is. Yes. Well, she's a legend. She's yeah. an icon. If this was a colour picture... You would tell You would have got it straight right. away, wouldn't you? But also you? with the mask <laughs> yes. on. But of course her mask is going to be embellished and, and studded. And bright yellow hair. Right, and right. I thought, it's Pam Hogg on the tube. And I've got my camera. And I thought, she's... I, if you know Pam Hogg, she works her backside yeah. off. She works incredibly hard. Mm. And I thought, she's on the tube, she just wants to get home. Because you're there in the tube. Lift the camera up, click, put it down, so gently. And I went to wind it on, I thought, feels she's funny. Gonna... Oh. So it feels funny, I thought, I oh, hope I've not lost this picture. But again, get home, develop it. You there never she is. Know. And there then she, there is. she is. Beautiful, beautiful. I always think, a lot of work are self-portraits. Um, mm -hmm. Photographers really are taking portraits of, of themselves. This was brought to my attention when someone looked at all my work and he said, her, her, <gasps> him, them, one person, a single person. Is that you in those photographs? Mm. I would argue that it is. I often think that when I look at work, but even, even the abstract, the color, I would imagine you and your personality and your character yeah. were all yes. multifaceted and dimensional. But it's, so. it's, it's such a big exhibition that it you've, is. Got, you've got and to spread it about. Yeah, you? You and really it's a have. love letter to Manchester, but it's, it, it can be um, all of these things at once. So thank you. This was such a beautiful tour and run through. Um, I want to take another look around. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah.